The following videos are from WriteBrightStation.com. Please note, the writing packets used in each video are only available for those with a membership. For the free printables for this lesson, go to WriteBrightStation.com. From the home page, choose the Assess tab. On the left Assessment menu, go down to Core Knowledge. Select your grade level and select the lesson. The lesson can be printed from this site. Talk to your principal about a site license for your school. Today's lesson is titled, What's in a Name? Before reading the passage, you always want to take a look at the writing instructions. The prompt today says, after reading What's in a Name, think about how names are chosen. Write an essay to explain how a person is given a name. Use information from the text to support your answer. What's in a name? A given name is a part of a person's personal name chosen by the parents soon after birth. It is a first name that identifies a specific person and differentiates that person from other members of a group, such as a family or clan, with whom that person shares a common surname. A given name is different from a surname, also known as a last name or family name, which is normally inherited and shared with other members of the child's immediate family. So what this is saying is your given name is your first name, a surname is your last name. Paragraph two, a child's given name is his or her legal name found on public records and on a birth certificate. People usually keep their given names throughout their lives. These names may be changed through a court of law. People immigrating from one country to another may also change their name to match the naming conventions found in the new country. Given names are the most important because they are a choice by the parents. A name is usually not given lightly. It represents thoughts and feelings that can be significant. Nicknames are sometimes shortened names. For example, James may be called Jim or Elizabeth may be called Beth. In many cultures, a person's name has more than one name. There is often a middle name. This is a second name that may honor close friends or family or simply be a name chosen by a parent for its beauty. When women get married, they often change their middle name to the last name they were given at birth. This helps identify the birth family while still taking the last name of a husband. Naming patterns can be found in some families. You will often see the same names used repeatedly in families. Many cultures believe in honoring their elders by naming children after them. Some families may show an extreme fondness for one name, and it can be found for many generations. Most names in English are specifically masculine or feminine, but there are many unisex names as well, such as Jordan, Jamie, Jesse, and Alex. Education, ethnicity, religion, class, and political ideology affect parents' choice of names. There are many tools parents can use to choose names, including books, websites, and applications. Popular culture appears to have an influence on naming trends, at least in the United States. Newly famous celebrities and public figures may influence the popularity of names. Characters from television shows also seem to influence naming. Songs can influence the naming of children. There is a lot of tradition and thought when choosing a name for a baby. We've read the prompt. We've read the passage. What do we do next? Say, read the prompt again. The prompt says, after reading what's in a name, think about how names are chosen. Write an essay to explain how a person is given a name. Use information from the text to support your answer. When you read the prompt again, the first thing you're looking for is the type of writing. This has the word explain. This signals that you are doing explanatory writing. It can also be called informative or expository. When you're doing explanatory writing, you are pretending the person reading your essay has never read the article that you read, and you are like a teacher teaching them this information. When you read the prompt again, the second thing we're looking for is what are you writing about exactly? Today, you are explaining how a person is given a name. Let's take a look at the plan. We're going to start with the beginning, cat. Catch, asking, and tell. Our C is our catch. You are catching the reader's attention. Today, we're going to use the announcement strategy. Let's blast off into the world of names. The spotlight today is on names. Join me on a journey into the world of names. On your paper, please indent and write a catch now. 
The A stands for asking. You have three choices when doing your asking. You can look at what the prompt is asking. The prompt says, think about how names are chosen. So you can write, names are chosen in many ways. You can ask a question. How did you get your name? With a question mark. Or you can ask yourself the topic and use it in a sentence. The topic is names, so you might say, a lot goes into choosing a name. Please write your asking sentence. You can write a question, you can use the prompt, or you can use the topic. Do this now. Finally, the T. The T stands for tell the reader what you're going to write about. Always look back at the prompt to make sure you're writing about the correct thing. Today we're explaining how a person is given a name. I've written, there are many things that go into giving a new baby a name. Please write a sentence telling what you're writing about now. Going back to the plan, we're done with our beginning. You've written your catch, asking, and tell, and now we're ready for the middle. You're going to go to skip a line, go to a new line and indent, and you're going to start with your AP, author's purpose. You might say, in this passage, the author worked hard to help the reader understand about the naming process. After reading this passage, it's clear that a lot goes into a name. This article focuses on naming. Again, skip a line, indent, and write an author's purpose sentence now. Going back to the plan, it's time for FF, which is fact-finding. As you can see, your fact-finding has been done for you. Fact-finding is when you go back and underline or highlight the most important things in the passage. You don't want to highlight everything. You underline the things that are the most important and the things that relate to what the prompt is asking. Before we can share this information, we have to tell the reader, hey reader, I'm going to tell you a bunch of things that did not come from my brain. They came from something I read. This is called a fact-finding phrase. Say, fact-finding phrase. Where these X's are, you can put in the word selection, text, source, passage. There's a lot of different names to call what we've read. You might say, according to the passage, the article reminds us that. The selection emphasizes that. Right after your author's purpose, write a fact-finding phrase now. Now it's time for you to paraphrase. That means that you cannot copy from the text. You have to put things in your own words. The very first paragraph talks about two things. It talks about the given name and how the given name is your first name that identifies a specific person in a family. And it also talks about a surname. The surname is the last name and that's usually shared. Everybody in the same family has the same last name. I want you to write at least Two sentences telling me about a given name and two sentences telling me about a surname. So you've said, according to the passage, now you can say a given name is a person's first name. And then you might say, this differentiates them from other people in their family. And then you could say, a surname is a person's last name. Then you might say, this is a name that's shared by everyone in the family. On your paper, I want to know what a given name is and a surname. Two sentences for each. Do this now. Paragraph three talks about how given names are the most important name. It says that these are chosen by the parents. A lot of thought and feeling and significant go significance goes into these names. Looking at paragraph three, use this information to give a couple sentences explaining that the most important name is a given name and then tell why that's so important because the parents spend a lot of time putting thought and feeling into that name. Do this now. Skipping down to paragraph five, notice you don't have to go in order. I'm gonna talk about naming patterns. Naming patterns is when you see the same name used repeatedly in a family and it usually honors the elders. Sometimes a grandfather, a father, and a son will all be named William. 
you're still in the same paragraph, explain in a sentence or two what naming patterns are from paragraph five. In your own words, do this now. Going back to paragraph four, it talks about middle names and how some cultures, not all cultures, we have a lot of middle names in America, have middle names. And sometimes this is chosen for its beauty. Sometimes this is chosen to honor a friend or family member. Sometimes when women get married, they change their middle name to their old surname so that people know who they are. On your paper, I want a couple sentences explaining what a middle name is. Do this now. The last paragraph talks about some different ways people in America often come up with a name, how it might have something to do with popular culture, or television shows, or there's different baby books and tools. I want a sentence or two using the information from the last paragraph. Do this now. Now you're going to skip a line and indent, and you're going to have a second middle paragraph. In this paragraph, you're going to explain how you were given an, your name. You may have to do this for homework. You may have to go home and talk to your parents about how you were given your name. You may have to make it up if you can't find out. How, maybe you don't have parents anymore and you're just not sure. You can make it up. But I want a, a middle paragraph explaining how you were given your name. Let's look at the sample. My parents did not have a name picked out for me before I was born. My mom was alone in her hospital room holding me when she looked at the tag in her robe. The designer was named Nikki. She loved the name Nikki, so Nikki it was. My middle name was a common middle name at that time. It was so common that four of my friends had the same middle name. It sure is strange how parents arrive at a name for their new baby. So you're going to write a paragraph once you find out how you got your name. I want you to sk skip about 10 lines down on your paper, and we're going to go ahead and write the conclusion. And you can go back later and write that paragraph on how you've got your name once you've done a little research. Looking at the plan, we're ready to write our ending, which is TERP. The T stands for transition. You should have skipped 10 lines down so that you can start your ending and save that room for your other middle. Go ahead and choose a transition word to conclude, in conclusion, as you can see, to sum up. Skip a line, indent, and write this now. The first R is recap. You are restating the question or telling a main point. I said, in closing, names are something we carry with us throughout our lives. Please write your recap now. The second R in TERP is a retell. You retell the main answer, why it's important, echo keywords, big ideas, no specific details. I've written, there are a lot of things that go into choosing a name for a new baby. Write a retell sentence now. Finally, the P in TERP stands for punch. You want to punch the reader with a powerful ending. I've written, next time you meet a new person, Ask how he got his name. Write your ending and don't forget to do that research and go back and write your paragraph on how you got your name. Great work. Visit writebrightstation.com for more lessons.